Slim down Elon Musk carries a kitchen sink into Twitter headquarters as he changes his profile to Chief Twit and vows to cut 75% of staff and close the $44 billion deal by Friday. As new report reveals, absolute decline in users. So Elon Musk fueled rumors he's closed the deal to buy Twitter after sharing a video of himself carrying a sink into his San Francisco headquarters. The world's richest man shared the clip Wednesday afternoon, which he captioned entering Twitter headquarters. Let that sink in. Musk changed his Twitter's profile location to Twitter HQ and his biography to Chief Twit two days ahead of a court order deadline to complete the $44 billion takeover. It comes a day after Musk made a vow in a video conference call with bankers who are helping fund the deal that he would close the takeover deal before the end of this week. Twitter's stock price has soared in recent weeks and closed at $53.35 on Wednesday, close to the $54.20 a share first offered by Musk for the firm in April. Musk, 51, looked happy and healthy as he strutted into what's believed to be his newest purchase, and he recently lost 20 pounds as a result of intermittent fasting diet. Which, by the way, Props to you, Musk. That's pretty cool. Led by Morgan Stanley, the banks have finished putting together the final credit agreement and are in the process of signing the documentation, marking one of the last steps in providing $13 billion towards the deal. But the imminent deal comes amid a gloomy report which found Twitter has suffered an absolute decline in users since the pandemic, with heavy tweeters making up less than 10% of accounts. So let's check this video right here. Just walking in with a sink. The thing is, like, if you're so rich, you have to do stuff like Elon does, just for the fun of it. So on Wednesday, Twitter's chief marketing officer sent a memo to employees to inform them that Musk would be visiting the San Francisco headquarters this week to address staff, Bloomberg reported. Elon is in the SF office this week meeting with folks, walking in the halls, and continuing to dive in on the important work you all do, the memo read. For everyone else, this is just the beginning of many meetings and conversations with Elon, and you'll all hear directly from him on Friday. He is widely predicted to embark on a huge call of Twitter's famously woke staff, with a Washington Post report touting a possible 75% reduction in its 7,500-strong workforce. Now, here's the thing that I honestly do not understand, right? Why would a company like Twitter, like a tech company, need 7,500 employees? That is something that I don't really understand. Because I feel like the majority of what Twitter typically does can just be automated by AI. So what's the point of literally having a expense of labor so high? Because you know the majority of Twitter employees are probably making close to six figures. So Musk has also vowed to take a far lighter touch on suspending users who break Twitter's rules on hate speech having declared himself a strong believer in free speech. The billionaire has found himself in hot water previously for some of his views, including comments on transgender issues. In 2020, he tweeted that pronouns suck, then hastily deleted the post and said, I absolutely support trans, but all these pronouns are an aesthetic nightmare. He has also voiced support for Republican Florida Governor Don Ron DeSantis, who tabled the so-called well, that's not actually what it's called. So Musk's transgender daughter, Vivian Jenna Wilson, cut ties with him earlier this year and said she's no longer lives with or wish to be related to my biological father in any way, shape, or form. Which I find that to be a little bit hilarious because you know darn well that this individual is probably still tied to Elon's money.
Delaware Chancery Court Judge Kathleen McCormick previously ordered Musk to close the deal to buy Twitter by 5 p.m. on Friday, October 28th, warning that otherwise a new trial date would be set in the firm's lawsuit seeking to force the sale. Musk cut a slimmed-down figure as he sauntered into the social media giant's headquarters with a sink in July. The billionaire packed... Oh, okay, basically just talking about, I guess, his weight gain and stuff. Now, here's the thing. It does actually look like he lost a good amount of weight, which is actually, like, a really cool thing, right? It is always nice to see anyone improve their health, right? So if you stumble upon this, maybe go and try out intermittent fasting. Maybe that would help you out if you want to lose weight. Let's see. So he credited fasting periodically for his slimmer physique and said in August that it helped shed 20 pounds from his unhealthy peak weight. Twitter stock also inched closer to must $54.20 per share buyout offer today, signaling that investors finally expect the deal to go through. The price was $53.35 when the market closed, a near seven-month high, which is the closet the closest they have come to must offer since it was announced in mid-April. And in the six months of dramatic back and forth since Musk announced his bid, Twitter initially resisted the deal. And the company also sued the world's richest man after he announced plans to abandon his offer on concerns about spam accounts on the platform. And Twitter shares dropped as low as $32.50 in July, and Musk's $54.20 bid was partly a joke allusion to 420, which is a reference to, you know what, the green stuff. So earlier this month, Musk proposed to proceed with his original blah, 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 blah. Okay, keep going. Let's see. Okay, so meanwhile, Twitter Sappers penned an open letter this week protesting Musk's alleged plans to lay off up to two-thirds of the company's employees after completing the deal. In this scathing note circulated Monday, staffers called the prospective layoffs reckless and a transparent act of worker intimidation. An unpublished draft of the letter read, Elon Musk plan to lay off 75% of Twitter workers will hurt Twitter's ability to serve the public conversation. Except for the thing is, you can't really say something like that when you block people from speaking. Kind of weird. So a threat of this magnitude is reckless, undermines our users and customers' trust in our platform, and is a transparent act of worker intimidation. And the letter sent by staff earlier this week also demanded Musk if going forward with the deal commits to preserving Twitter's current headcount, which is ridiculous. It also requests Musk, a notorious libertarian who has demonstrated a preference for the right in recent months, does not discriminate against employees based on their political beliefs. What? Like, isn't that interesting? Because I'm pretty certain Twitter has discriminated against employees and people based on their political beliefs. Really weird. The letter instead demands must commit to fair severance policies and more transparent communication about working conditions while asserting that staffers would not be intimidated by the 51-year-old multi-billionaire. A threat to workers at Twitter is a threat to Twitter's future, the notice viewed by DailyMail.com reads. Like, the thing is... One, Twitter is just too thick of a company, meaning they need to get rid of the bloat, right? Twitter is basically like right after you you ate a whole bunch of pasta, right? You got a big belly that you could just basically like shake and like hear the sloshing noises inside your stomach, right? After eating all that pasta. You have to... Get rid of all this nonsense inside your body, right? Like, the thing is, I could see Twitter maybe having, like, a couple hundred employees, maybe, if that. Honestly, I don't really understand why can't Twitter just have, like, 20 to 30 employees, right? And automate as much as they can. Like, why not just go down that route? I'm pretty sure Stripe was a very small firm, and they did payment processing, right? 
there's a lot of companies out there that are massive that are very small in terms of their employee headcount. And you also got to keep in mind too, a lot of Twitter's employees also didn't just work. Like they just would not show up for work for like a week. And in April, before launching his long-winded $44 billion takeover bid, Musk posed the question, is Twitter dying? He may have been on the money, as recent internal documents show that the social media platform has had an absolute decline in users since the pandemic. So, users are increasingly interested in cryptocurrency and not safe for work content instead of celebrities and politics, topics that have been Twitter's bread and butter. Without these power users, Twitter could also struggle to attract new or keep existing advertisers. And a Twitter spokesman said that his audience has continued to grow, reaching 238 million monetizable daily active users in quarter two, 2022. But the company has been found to falsify its monetizable daily active users, the number of users who can see ads on the site. And Musk will face trial if the Twitter deal is not signed by Friday. Bum, 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 bum. Interesting. Let's see some of the comments on this article. Liberals are freaking out and 75% of Twitter staff are going to find out really soon what socialism does to an economy and pocketbooks. And just before the election, awesome. Am I the only millennial who doesn't use and never cared to use Twitter? You're not alone, this person says. The thing is, like, I don't really understand. Well, like, I'll put it this way. I probably would never use Twitter. Mainly because... Since I've never used Twitter, I don't know what I'm missing out on. So, you know, there's that. It's kind of like, you know, people who don't drink, right? If you've never drank before, do you know what you're really missing out on when you've never experienced it? Interesting. Feel free to give your thoughts, and if you want to learn how to get out of debt, go down below.